This is a smart hotel in the centre of Edinburgh. But this guy isn't checking in. He's here to buy a cut price laptop. That makes him the mark in the double switch. The person selling the laptops is Rob Marks, and he looks a lot like Paul. Charlie, nice to meet you. Have a seat, Charlie. Um, someone else is coming along as well. She said she'll be here in a second. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah just uh, take care of everybody at the same time. That mystery someone else is Jess. She's looking a lot more chavvy than normal, but that's all part of the scam. You, Rob? Yes. Hi, sorry. Uh, Sue. Susie. How are you? I am all right, yeah. Yeah, have a seat. Sorry, have my seat. boyfriend can't actually find a place to park, so we're just waiting outside. So, dodgy looking Jess as a dodgy bloke waiting for her outside. So, um, these are, my company gives these away to clients, and so basically they have a whole bunch of them left over yeah and uh so the 200 cash but this particular model is about 500 you know if you buy it in the shop so it's, it's a pretty good deal do you want to check it or I mean, I probably should i don't know if you want to or not. <laughs> i'll look at you they're the same aren't they uh, yeah they're both exactly the same let me open it for you paul explains that the laptops are leftover client gifts from his company the mark wants to check what's actually in the box and paul's happy to oblige Sure enough, it's a brand new, high-spec laptop worth hundreds of pounds. I one just like it, but it's about a year old. OK, well, that, I think that's all right. Yeah, I mean, it's fine, you know, they all work. Do you want to have a little hook in There's a warranty card in here. Just send that off, you can do it online, and it, it's covered right. for two years, which is excellent. So, so 200, please. Is that all the case? So the goods are kosher, and the mark seems happy to pay. Out comes the money. Do you mind if I check it? Is that okay? No, I don't trust you. <laughs> um, there you go. Paul checks the cash and transfers it to a new envelope. Um, this is very good. And that goes in his jacket pocket for safekeeping. You yeah. Go with that one? Would you mind, before I actually give you the money, can I just show it to my boyfriend outside? Because I don't really know much about computers and that. Is, can he come in? No, because we couldn't find a place to park, could we? So can he... Can I just take it out to him now and just show? I'd be like two minutes, just like literally just outside. Yeah, can I bring it out to you? Okay, I'll just go tell him. Right. Yeah, no okay. worries. Is that all right? All right, just, thank you. Obviously, I want to um, show Charlie, would you? Give, uh, yes, absolutely. Would you do me a favour? Can you hold that for a second? Just, I don't want to take cash out to her. Would that be okay? Paul clearly thinks Jess looks well dodgy. He's unhappy about meeting some stranger in a car park and asks the mark to keep hold of his cash just in case it turns out to be a trick. After all. You can't be too careful these days. The Mark waits patiently for Paul to return. Still no sign of Paul, but the Mark's so happy with his purchase, he's even chatting on the phone about it with a friend. Everything's okay, I check it already, all the laptops, all the budget, all the equipments. Everything is perfect. A full half hour later, and Paul's not back yet. The Mark's still chilling, though. He's got his laptop. He's looking after the cash. What could possibly go wrong? Maybe he can surf the web to kill some time. Or can he? So what's really going on? Earlier, Jess timed her entrance perfectly from her stakeout in the cafe next door. Once Paul had the Mark's cash, he transferred the money into another envelope. Jess distracted him with her cock and bull story about her boyfriend. And Paul made the switch by replacing the envelope containing the Mark's cash with an identical one filled with bits of newspaper. Paul then walked out with the real laptop, meeting Jess outside. All they had to do was pop into a nearby cafe until everything had blown over. Is that pepperoni? Uh, no, I think it's just cheese. <laughs> That box looked convincing. It really contained a pack of cheap printer paper. But the Mark still thought he had that envelope of cash that Paul left with him. But after a quick peek inside, he couldn't believe his eyes. Instead of crisp 20 pound notes, it was stuffed with newspaper. 
and the realisation that he'd been scammed hits him like a slap in the face. This all seems pretty legit. The mark has seen a laptop coming out of its box and naturally assumes that the other box is identical. Whenever buying anything privately, be aware that con artists are experts at gaining your trust and separating you from your money. Always be vigilant and remember that a deal may not be as fair as it first seems.